Today I'm going to teach you how to accomplish an underwater scene like this. In Blender 2.9. Let's get started. So the first thing you want to do before touching anything in Blender is to get rid of the default cube as we won't be needing it. You can click on the object you want to delete. Hit X on your keyboard and hit delete to get rid of the object. Now to help us with making our underwater scene, we are going to go to the Blender preferences and go ahead with installing some useful add-ons that Blender isn't equipped with out of the box. You go over here to Edit, Preferences, and once your window is brought up, you can go to Add-ons, scroll down to ANT Landscape, check that. Import Images as Planes, check that. And Node Wrangler, check that. Now once all of your add-ons are checked, we can go over here, Save Preferences, and close that window. Now that we have all that installed, we can begin laying down the basics to our scene. Now Blender is heavily reliant on its users to learn the keyboard shortcuts that help use many of Blender's features, and even though recent updates have introduced more basic UIs and have done a lot for user-friendly designs, the Blender program is still learned best, with shortcuts in mind. If at any time the shortcuts I use are not understood, my keyboard strokes will show up at the bottom right of my scene window for you to see. Okay, now we can begin. We are going to make our seabed first, and to do that we start by adding a new object by pressing Shift A to bring up our add menu, go to the mesh, scroll down to landscape, and hit landscape. Now before moving the object we just added in, we have to come down to the bottom left of our window and hit the landscape object properties to change a couple parameters. Over here in operator settings we will change this to dunes. We can change mesh size X and mesh size Y to both 50. We can change size X and size Y to both 5. And over here in display settings, we will change height to 0.97. Close enough. And that will make the basic look of our sandy seabed. By pressing number pad 0, it will bring us to the camera view we have on our scene. And by pressing the Z key, it will bring up options for selecting different material viewports. This is what the scene looks like being rendered as is. Pretty boring, right? Let's add some textures to the sand to make it look more like sand. Over at the top of our window, we have tabs for different workspaces within Blender, so by hitting the Shading tab, we can begin working on the textures. Remember to constantly save your project so you don't lose any progress. You can do that easily by pressing Ctrl S on your keyboard, and that'll open the Save menu. We can type in anything for a project. With this tab open, we can select our seafloor, and with our Node Wrangler add-on installed, the process of applying texture maps to our object is made really simple. We start by hitting new over here, and in our principal PSDF, we hit Control shift t to bring up our Node Wrangler add-on, and then we navigate to whatever folder we have our textures in. In our folder, we can select every single one of our texture maps and hit this principal texture setup button. Because of our add-on, every single texture map is applied automatically to our principal PSDF shader. Now as you can see, the textures on our object don't look natural, so we must first do a couple things to make that look a little bit better. We can start by going over here to our UV editing tab. Inside this window, we can select every single one of our faces on our object, and hit U on our keyboard to bring up the UV mapping menu. Next we hit Smart UV Project, and hit OK. Now if we go back to object mode by pressing Tab on our keyboard, we can see that our sand floor looks a lot more like sand. Next we work on the ocean surface. We first start by adding a simple plane by using our Add menu again. The shortcut for that is Shift A. We add in a mesh, and we add in a plane. Using the G key, we can move the small plane up to be over our sand and up a bit. Blender will now do the heavy work for us, because by going over here to the modifier settings, we can add Ocean Physics modifier to our boring plane and create a moving ocean surface. Now we are just going to change a couple things with this modifier. The resolution will be moved to 20. And to make the ocean look like it's moving, we will right click on the time option to add a keyframe on frame 1. Go back to our layout to see our time frame window. You can scroll up on this time frame window by moving over with your mouse. Here you can see the keyframe that we just made for frame number 1. Go back to the modifier settings. By moving our time frame window all over to 250, we can add another keyframe to make this look like it's moving. Hit the keyframe button over here, and change time to something like 5. Now if we scroll through our time frame window, you can see that our plane is now moving with ocean moves. 
Next, we can go back into our camera view to change what we're looking at in the scene. Select the camera by hitting the border over here. Make sure that's highlighted. We can hit G, and we can start moving our camera. Move that to some place where you think you would like it. In our camera view, we can also double tap R to freehand rotate. If we press R once, we can change on a scale. Now that our camera is positioned, we can see the scene a little bit better. If we press play over here, we can see what the scene will look like when it starts playing. Next, we are going to change the color of our world in our blender scene to bring some color into our ocean. We'll go for a light teal color. To make our water surface look more like water, we're going to go into the shader tab again and delete the principal shader node. Make sure to select the water surface and we can begin applying textures. You can delete the shader over here by pressing X on it and adding in a new shader. Same way we add objects to our scene by pressing Shift A, we can add new nodes by pressing Shift A too. So Shift A, we can search, we can do glass, BSDF, and glossy, BSDF. Next we bring in a mix shader, same way by pressing mix shader and last we can do the material output now we plug in glass into our first shader glossy into our second and shader into our surface We can turn the color of our world down a little bit to make it look more realistic. Now to make this scene actually look like it's underneath the water, we are adding in a simple cube object and expanding that to fit our entire seabed and surface. Hit Shift A, add mesh, cube, scale that up, and to scale on specific sides we can hit S on our keyboard and hit X, Y, or Z to scale on those coordinates. Just make that fit the surface of our seabed and our sea surface. Once you got that cube in, we can go into our shading tab again, hit new, and instead of principal BSDF, we can delete that and add in a principled volume node. We hit the volume into our volume material output, and if we go back into rendered, you can see that this shows up. Now we change the color back to down a little bit to a more tealish green color, lighten that up a little bit, turn the density down to something uh, around 0.3 you can change your world color to better match whatever aesthetic you're going for I just have to change mine into a light blue now you can also change the color of this to change the color of the water you can change the settings of the density too to make the water look more murky or clear if you want it. Let's move the sea surface down a little bit so we can actually see it within our camera view. Now in the background of our scene you can actually see the line where the horizon ends on our seabed floor. To make that look a little bit better we're going to add a plane to stop that. Hit shift A, add mesh, plane, rotate this plane by pressing R on your keyboard, pressing Y, and then hitting 90 on your numpad. We can now move this up a little bit and move it back. Then we can scale it to fit our surface area. Hit S on your keyboard to scale, press Y, and move that over. You can actually move that down a little bit. And now that line is gone. Next thing that we can do is go over here, click on this light, and change that to a sunlight. That brightens up our entire screen. To make this look a little bit better, we can change our strength down to 1.2, move our sun underneath our surface, and change the angle, and rotate the sun to leave reflections on the top of our water surface.
Something like that should work fine. Now we can actually add in another sun by pressing add light sun. Moving that above the water surface. What that's going to do is add in a little bit of light to the rest of our scene. We can change the angle of this too. That should be good. Next thing we'll do is add in another landscape object and add in a rock. Hit shift A. Mesh. Landscape. And instead of being another dune, we will go over here to the operator settings and hit rock. Next we can bring in this rock closer to us. Move it up a little bit. And position that in our camera view to wherever we might like it. Remember to save your project. Next thing we can do is actually add textures to this rock. You go back into shading. Click our rock, add in a new shader, and we can add whatever textures we want to the rock. Same thing, we can do Control shift t to add in our old Wrangler add-on. We can go up to where our rock is and click the, uh, the rock. Now you can see the textures aren't applied correctly to this object, so we would need a UV unwrap this like we did our seafloor. Go back to UV editing. Now a cool trick to learn is if you select an object and you want to focus your camera on that, you can actually press the period on your numpad and it will bring you to that object. Same thing, we will press U on our keyboard, Smart UV Project, hit OK, hit Tab to go back into object mode, and now our rock looks more like a rock. To make this rock look a little bit more realistic, we can add in a brightness and contrast node into our shader materials. Then we can add a mix shader as well. You want to plug in the bright contrast node in between the texture and the base color. Then the mix shader between the BSDF and the surface. Now if we change the brightness to this, we can change the brightness of our textures. Change the contrast as well. Okay. One last thing we can do is try to add in a shadow over here to make this rock look like it's casting a shadow on our seafloor. The way to do that is to go into a texture paint panel right here. Go into rendered view. get close to where the rock texture is. Now instead of applying this texture paint to the rock texture, we can go back to our shading. We can select our seabed floor, go back into texture paint, and make sure the texture slot is over here on the color object. Now we can start applying texture over here, slowly. And the more we go in, the more it looks like the shadow is being cast onto the thing. Okay, once you get the shadow texture loaded up, you can save the image over here, save all images, save your project, and this is the basis of your underwater scene. You can add whatever you want to this scene now that you're done with this. You can add fish models, you can add seaweed, you can add shipwrecks, but this is going to be as far as we'll go today. Thank you for watching.